it's really important for us to get an understanding of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, these realms that are in us and around us that Jesus taught us about. Jesus' main, main focus in ministry, along with healing the sick, he would raise the dead, he would cleanse lepers, he would preach to the brokenhearted, preach to the poor, forgive sins. His main focus as far as teaching, not actions that were with it, his main teaching was the kingdom. After he came out of the wilderness, he came out in spirit, he came out in the spirit and power, and the first message that he preached and all throughout his teachings was the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. In order for us to get an understanding of the kingdom and what it means and why we have the ability to influence the earth and take back the kingdom that is in darkness, that is under the dominion of darkness, Dominion is a influencing force. This earth is not made for the devil. It was made for man. Psalm says that heaven of heavens belongs to God. Earth he has given to man. So to understand the kingdom and what we are supposed to be growing in and influencing change into creation, we have to understand God's precepts. The precept is the origin, the starting point of an idea and then an idea will grow and what we often get <clears throat> what we often get is concepts good and good concepts and then we will also get misconceptions David was a man who sought God's heart he sought to get into God to get into his character he trusted his character David trusted God's character and God's ability and God's nature more than he trusted himself. David had a very interesting life, <laughs> to say the least. He had lots of, of points of sin in his life, but God is on record saying that David is a man after my own heart. And the reason David was a man after God's heart is because David was a man that was after God's heart. <laughs> he said in Psalms 119, verse 27, Make me understand the way of your precepts, so that I will meditate, focus my thoughts on your wonderful works. That's just one of many things David said. But the reason that David was recorded as being a man after God's own heart, and we're always told, hey, if you think you're doing bad, just look at David, and then da-da-da, he has this on record. David wasn't interested in what was going on around him. He wasn't interested in news. He wasn't interested in the politics. He was interested in the heart of God, and that's what we need to be interested in, and to understand the kingdom, kingdom dynamics, and how we're supposed to be advancing the kingdom, we have to get into the precepts of God which are found in his heart. Think about this. Yeah, so <clears throat> think about the game you played in grade school called Telegram or Operator or Mailman where you sit in a big circle as a class and the teacher or somebody whispers something in the ear to the person next to them and then they start off with like a sentence or two and then that person tells the next person and the next person. What you got? So each person tells the next person. Do you remember playing operator or mailman or telegram? Yeah. Yeah? Are you recording? Yeah. Oh, jeez. I can edit it out. It's fine. I know it's fine. I'm going to edit you out so hard. Thanks. You betcha. You betcha. Anywho. Anywho. Each person tells the sentence or phrase or whatever to the next person, the next person, the next person. So on and so forth, you get to the end of the circle, you get to the end of the class, everyone has had a chance to hear and then speak. And what you find almost every time, every time that I played it, was that the message that you end up at the end with is completely 
different than what it started as. <laughs> Oftentimes, what we have passed down to us is generations upon generations upon generations of belief systems, of concepts and misconceptions that just are passed down, passed down, and we end up in our generation with all kinds of information. Things happen to people in their lives and people are challenged by situations, circumstances, things that arise in the world, okay? People are always trying to figure out and make sense of what's happening around them so they will change belief systems. If they can't change the situation, they will find a way to cope with what's going on. It gets wild thousands of years later down the line, the concepts of God, all the different things people say about God. God God took my kid. God took my mom. God took my dad. He needed another angel. Different belief systems of how the end of the world is going to be, what the end of the world means. Different belief systems on different belief systems about does God heal all the time or not? Is healing God's will? Is sickness God's will? Is God doing this to punish me. All these different concepts of God flow out of people's life experience and trying to wrap their mind around it. And we all need to we all need to adopt the desire of King David where you go straight to the source, the origin of the idea. Because misconceptions will kill people. <laughs> it's killed millions of people. Ideas have have helped people live and have helped people die for thousands of years. So it's important to get to the genesis, to get to the origin of the idea. And that is where a precept comes in. Now, David asked God to teach him his precepts. And his thoughts were dwelling on the wonders of God. Did you ever wonder why David was not scared of a lion or a bear or Goliath or Saul <laughs> or any nation he went up against, or any any king of the giants he killed, any Philistine army, you know. David's mind was fully engulfed in God's heart. He was, he was living out of precepts, not out of current facts, not out of circumstances, not out of what's happening in politics, what's happening in the world, all that stuff. He initiated change in his generation, and he influenced his generation. He restored Israel. He... He did things against what you could think was possible because he was living out of the heart of God, out of the possibilities of God and the precepts of God, which transcend time and space. We have to come with the mindset of, God, what do you say about this? And you can find it in the word, but sometimes your belief systems scrub it out because you've been taught that these verses mean one thing when actually a verse will mean different things to you at different times depending on your maturity level <laughs> the bible is alive and active it says in hebrews the word of god is alive and active it says in hebrews the word of god is not just the bible let me correct that that was a mistake the word of god is not just the bible the bible is written is a written record of people's experiences with god the Word of God is alive and active because the Word of God is a person, that's Jesus. You can find in written scripture the precepts of God and you will always be able to find an anchor in the written word because everyone that has experienced God has at one point or another walked through some stuff with him and, they, and God, since he doesn't change, his ways don't change, the Word will open up to you according to your maturity level. That's why some people read it and debate about it with other people because they're not seeing the same things. Their belief systems are filtering all the time. That's what our belief systems do. They filter things in and out. It's like uh, the, the word calls us gates and doors and it says, lift up your eyes, O ye gates, lift up your eyes or heads, you doors. Let the king of glory come in and shine, something like that. We are gates and doors. Our belief systems are also our gates and doors. And whoever controls the gate controls what can come in and what can go out. Your belief system forms your reality. <laughs> really. You'll find precepts in the Word, but you can't find them without God. 
That's why an atheist can read the Bible and be sure that he can question God's character or that God isn't real because he's reading it without the Spirit and being summoned. So, so it's important to live by precepts. It's important to... <laughs> not only is it important to live by precepts, it's important to live by just constant communion and relationship with God himself. The New Covenant, written in Scripture, literally says... I will remember your sins no more and you won't need a man to teach you you will be taught by God himself <laughs> so you should be being taught that you don't need people to teach you kind of mind-boggling but it is true that we can trust Papa God we put our thoughts and stuff in in into what we speak and sometimes we bring in error that we shouldn't. That's the difference between a prophet and an oracle. A prophet speaks from speaks of what they see of God through their belief systems, and that will put a uh, we'll say a filter on what he's saying. But an oracle will lay aside his belief systems and just speak unfiltered what he is hearing God say, what he is seeing, even if it doesn't make sense to them. An oracle speaks directly from heaven. A prophet speaks through belief systems, which they're still good. <laughs> you can still ha have a lot of good come out of the prophetic. It's just not a perfected gifting like an oracle where you lay aside your understanding. An oracle sets aside understanding and says, this is what I got. I don't even know, but seek it out. <laughs> That's the difference between a prophet and an oracle. We need to seek out precepts. We need to seek God the Father himself because that's the new covenant he paid for. In the Old Testament, you had anointings and you had stuff that would come on people. You had the Holy Spirit that would come on people and do things for a season and a time to move Israel forward towards the plan of redemption. But now that, now that salvation is here, all the types and shadows are fulfilled in Christ. Christ is the substance of what they were looking forward to. And now instead of instead of us having Holy Spirit having an anointing come on us to uh, to achieve something, now we have God inside of us and he's trying to transform and transfigure us and push it out to the world and change the world. <laughs> in these times of like pandemic house orders to stay home and the temptation to be afraid and the temptation to think that this is the end of the world and all this stuff i used to have a grid for that but now i don't because i started seeking the precepts of god and i can't find anywhere that god doesn't win and where he's not wise enough to figure out a way to bring it about that completely boggles our minds. <laughs> the fear is gone. And I was like, am I, am I so callous? Am I numb? <laughs> I didn't know what it was like to live without fear. In these days where we have mandatory break, a lot of us, oh my goodness, like <laughs> I wake up excited because I know I'm going to have more focused time with Yahweh all day. Yeah, one quick thing I want to add to this precept thing. My shower routine. Try this. It will get you so jacked up in the ghost. You will not <laughs> know what to do with yourself. You will need to do some type of exercise or go for a run or something because you will be so infused with the spirit of life if you believe it and trust God is good and that he actually will do this stuff. In Zechariah 3, Joshua the high priest stepped through the veil of whatever. Joshua the high priest stepped through the veil and he was immediately in the spirit and the accuser was at, this is my left, this is your right, probably look, it looks like it's my right. The accuser was accusing him and the Lord said, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. So every accusation the enemy could bring against Joshua was dismissed. Your past is gone. Your current struggles are gone. When you step into the kingdom, sin is not there. <laughs> 
All there is is spirit and life. Your the things that you struggle with are only in the physical realm, are only in the spirit realm that is not the kingdom of heaven realm, okay? So when you step in through what they call second heaven, there is, there is that's, there's dimensions. You don't have to break through any spiritual thing to get to God, to get into heaven because Jesus is your direct access. Thank you, Jesus, for editing abilities so that these videos don't go on forever. Every enemy accusation is dismissed. I will remember your sins no more. <laughs> and you will be taught by God himself. And the high priest was the most holy person in the world at the time. That's why he was the only one allowed to go in to the Holy of Holies. To the, where the presence of God was was dwelling. The holiest man in the world. Two things happened here. Three things happened here. <laughs> Two, three. Three things happened here. The Lord rebuke you, Satan. Every enemy accusation against you, everything you've ever done is gone. Take those filthy garments off him. The holiest person in the world, the high priest, take those filthy rags off him. Our earthly works, our the things that we think we need to do to earn God's love and to earn the gift of salvation, to earn the gift of righteousness, anything you do in human power to try to be good for God is called filthy rags to him because you can't give him anything he hasn't already given you. You can't do anything in your ability that he hasn't already put an unction in you to do. From this position, all your sins are gone. All your good works trying to earn God's love are gone. Every Anything you're trying to hide or you think he doesn't see is gone. <laughs> he sees it all anyway. You are bare. You are exposed before Yahweh. And he loves you still. Okay? This is the point. He loves you. And he says, give him these new garments. This is sonship. Sonship is received. You can't, you can't take sonship you can't work your way up into sonship you can't work your way up in through the fivefold into sonship sonship is received because god is good he says give him these new garments and then zechariah is recorded and he says hey give him a new turban too so boom new crown i do this in my shower <laughs> because i'm bare and i'm before yahweh bare before yahweh you need to come to him without anything on you. No condemnation from your past. No good works you think you did earning his love. You just come before him and say, here I am, I'm your son. And he, he gives you new garments. And from there you start your day. You are a loved son of God. Getting kind of ramped up here now. And that's where you start your day from. The awareness that you are a beloved son of God. In Christ Jesus, you are a new creation. You let that hit your spirit through your soul into your body, and and you're ready to go. Because <laughs> it's it's amazing. It's wild. It's too good to be true. It's the gospel. And from there, you're free. You're free to run up to your dad and hug him. He lives inside of you. So what I personally do... Is I give myself a big bear hug and I say thank you for living in me Papa thank you for thank you for breaking darkness off of me what's up <laughs> and that's why I do it in the shower when I'm alone because <laughs> it's an intimate thing that does not sound right <laughs> hmm? gotta have context that's why I do it in the shower when I'm alone because it's an intimate thing if you don't know what we're talking about, that could sound really bad. <laughs> I love my wife. Um, <laughs> from there, you're free. You run up, give your dad a big hug. He lives inside of you anyway. He who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. I pray that you would understand that you and I are one, like the Father and I are one, and there's just, it's all through Scripture that God has always wanted to live in us. Temples not made by human hands that he could dwell in. This is where he belongs. <laughs> some even say, some even go as far as to say, we are the fourth part of the Trinity. He chose to, 
display himself in humanity and through humanity and carve out a space in us where he can live and dwell. That's what makes us unique among all creation. Any created creature has nothing on us because we're his family and we can host the Lord of hosts. Be free. Be unafraid. Trust God. Ask him to teach you his precepts and you will find everything in there. Ask him to insert your understanding into his heart. Ask him to insert his heart into your understanding. Bless you.